Hey guys, welcome to the seventh episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast. And man, this was a great episode, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I had my fellow spiritual YouTuber brother, Dakota Wint, which you guys have been requesting for a long time. And you'll be happy to know that we went down a very deep, weird rabbit hole. This whole podcast journey has been really cool, and it's just the beginning. That's what blows my mind. This is only episode seven, and I've had some pretty cool people on so far. And it would just be interesting to know what episode 100 would be like, you know what I mean? And I definitely intend to keep this thing going. It gives This gives me so much joy in life, for sure. I mean, like, I get to talk to amazing people from all walks of life, and because of uh, my position with this channel, it's like I have the opportunity to interview a lot of people that I wouldn't have had access to before. So that's awesome. Like I'm learning so much for myself. And on top of this, it's like I'm just having a conversation with people, but it's getting broadcasted to the world wide web forever. It's like getting immortalized for you guys to see. And I know that some of a lot of you guys have been really loving these podcasts. Some of you not so much, but it's like, I'm going to keep doing them anyway. This podcast is still in the very early stages, guys. So there's a lot that I need to work on myself, especially my conversationalist skills, you know, the audio uh, levels, which some of you guys complain about. But hey man, I've learned every podcast, I learned something new, especially things that I should and shouldn't do. And I was like, looking back on this, uh, this podcast with Dakota, and I'm just constantly like, hmm. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's like in real life that's fine but when you know thousands of people are listening to it around the world it can get annoying so I do apologize I'm trying to stop that it's just I get really immersed in the conversation I'm like oh yeah mm. like I'm just like really into it but then sometimes I forget oh, wait maybe other people don't want to he hear that constant mm, 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 ooh, ah. like I can assure you that episode 100 will be much different to this one in terms of how I present myself and how I converse with people. So, but it's awesome. Like this is all a part of the journey, which I'm loving. So yeah, this is fucking amazing. And it's thanks to you guys that I'm able to even do this, you know, for a living. It's incredible. Just beyond my wildest dreams. So if you guys do enjoy this podcast, you know, let us know in the comment section below. And if you do want to help fund this channel, go check out Patreon, definitely the best platform to do so. Or you can get some merch, got some cool like psychedelic designs there. I'm working on getting some more. It's just a lengthy, pricey process. But hey man, it's all part of the journey. Um, I'm having a lot of fun anyway. That's all that really matters. I guess another way you can support this podcast, which I haven't verbalized it before, is you can send me some Bitcoin. Because some of you guys put in the comments like, hey, where's it? you know, you should have a Bitcoin wallet. And I, I have for a long time. I just leave it in the description box. But I guess most people don't check the description box. And now I'm going to start verbalizing it. So if you want to donate some Bitcoin, it's up to you. Like you don't actually, you don't have to, it's just a suggestion. I'll leave a link to my Bitcoin address. I guess the only real sponsor, which is not even a real sponsor, it's just an affiliate link, is Audible, right? So if you want to get a free 30 day trial and one free audiobook, uh, click on the affiliate link below and you can do so. One, a uh, few books that I'd recommend off the bat would be Mastery by Robert Greene, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins, and The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. That's a classic. So yeah, check it out. These books could change your life. You never know. But anyways, guys, on to my next guest, Dakota Wint. Man, I absolutely love this guy and his videos. He's so authentic in the way he expresses himself. He's really humble and cool. Chill that dude. Like the kind of person that I like to hang out with. And it's just a shame that I live on the opposite end of the world. Because I'm, yeah. It'd just be awesome to hang out with this guy in person, but I'm sure one day our lives will cross um, and it will be glorious. Dakota has a YouTube channel that emphasizes more on spirituality. He's got a clothing line, stay happy, stay weird. Um, I'll, like, I'll leave all the appropriate links in the description box below if you want to connect with Dakota. But yeah, a lot of you guys have been requesting him to come on the podcast and it finally happened and it was fucking awesome. We went down a very weird rabbit hole we talked, I uh, wrote it here. By the way, I've got timestamps because you guys have been requesting it. And this is the first time I've done it. So we talked about Dakota's first mushroom trip. Is the psychedelic experience real? Uh, we talked about isolation tanks, psychedelics and the Bible, DMT aliens, whether or not we should hang up the phone once we get the message, which is an Alan Watts metaphor about psychedelics. We also talked about Jesus Christ. And like, just before... 
and start this podcast actually i need to address a few things that i said in this podcast which without some context it might not sound great that is so we talked about whether or not we should hang up the phone right once you get the message which referring to psychedelics and i'm you can tell in this podcast that i have a very strong opinion on this matter and for me right now i'm very against the idea of going back to the psychedelic experience for myself but you guys have got to realize that I have a lot of fear and trauma surrounding psychedelics. So for sure, I am projecting a lot of my own emotions to this topic. And I can get into this like on a ra just a purely rational moment. But I want to dedicate a video to this and why I don't trip anymore. Instead of getting it, like I want to just touch base on it right now. But I want to make it more in detail in a video later. I just need more time to gather my thoughts, guys. Because it's... Hasn't been really that long since I've had like the most traumatic experience of my life and it's just completely turned me off from tripping. And of course this depends on your purpose for psychedelics, right? Whether you want to explore it for scientific reasons or whether you just want to go on more of a Zen kind of path like Alan Watts, you're going to have a different approach to psychedelics. And I used to be very like, oh, I want to just know more about it and about the science and, you know, the empirical evidence, at least on a subjective level and I want to explore these states more and especially because I have this channel so I was like I should know more about this right and for me I went a complete 180 turn away from that attitude and now it's like I don't give a shit about that and in the podcast I say I don't give a fuck about the science and the knowledge but when I say that for you guys who think I'm just against science and that, no, absolute bullshit if anything I'm more logical and skeptical than I am anything else. When I specifically say I don't give a fuck about the science and the knowledge, I'm specifically talking about me empirically exploring these subjective states for myself. For me, I'm like done. And you guys have to note as well that this is my state of mind right now. Things always change. The universe is always in flux. Um, so what I think now may not be the same what I think two years from now. I just need more time to gather my thoughts and I will, again, eventually make a video on this. Just one more thing before you guys go. Um, I just want to mention Jesus, you know, Lord and Savior, thank you. Now, but we talked about Jesus during the end of this podcast. And I was very vague in my thoughts of Jesus. I don't want to talk too much about it only because I'm still gathering my thoughts about it. I'm just kind of dabbling in here and there from what I've learned about Jordan Peterson and his teachings and things like that. Just for the record, here in this video when I say, oh... There's just something about Jesus I'm talking about. There's just something there that resonates with me for some reason. And just because I resonate with Jesus doesn't mean that I agree with the Bible because this could be completely separate. Remember that Jesus wasn't a Christian. But anyway, I don't want to get into it now because I don't know shit. But enjoy the podcast. Catch you on the next video. Peace. All right, guys, welcome to a special episode of Your Mate Tom podcast. I've got a fellow YouTuber that you guys have hello. been... Hello. that you guys have been bugging me for ages. Yeah, you're, you're one of my most requested guests, actually. So. No way. Yeah, for real. Oh, yeah. wow, I'm honored. Hello, yeah. everybody. Hello. We did it. We made it happen. Here we, we are. We did. What's going on, brother? <laughs> How are you? I'm um, very happy right now. feeling positive right now. Just another day in the universe, floating yeah. through space Stay happy, and time, stay weird. Or something like that. <laughs> Staying happy. Awesome, man. Well, I've been following your backpacking adventures in India, and it looks fucking epic. Yeah, that happened. That happened once in my life. When did... How long ago did it happen? Like, I mean, how I've long have you been for, back? I've been home for, like, three weeks. I got home the mm. 12th, actually, of this month. Or the 10th of this month. Something like that. So I've been home for a couple of weeks now. But, yeah, I was in India for a month and a week-ish, and then went from India to the Middle East, hung out in Jordan for a week, went to Petra and Jarash, which is like this uh, really cool Roman ruins. I don't know if you saw my Instagram, but there's like this, yeah. this ancient... Yeah, oh, that's what that like was. They're like 3,000 yeah. years old or something like that. It's at like the border of Syria Shit. and Jordan. <laughs> I didn't feel unsafe at all. It was like, it was awesome the whole time I was there. Okay, but okay. so you weren't like, oh, was, I've had a good life. I'm good. No, no, it wasn't okay. sketchy at all. But I was <laughs> okay. the only person there for the most part, besides the people that like kind of worked there. So I had like the freedom to just walk around and just like really get to explore these these nice. rooms. 
Fuck yeah. And they had like they had like basements and stuff like that in some of these places. It was really cool. Like basements. they had a theater. Yeah, like they had a theater that had like this this like underground like I don't know what they kept under there, but it was like these underground tunnels and like rooms. Really? Yeah, it was in, it was in a theater. So Holy I don't know shit. what they would have kept there. You know, maybe like props or something. I don't know. Um, can you talk about your? Because in India, you discovered this weed village, this hidden weed village. Oh yeah, <laughs> can yeah. you please talk about how you discovered that and how was that experience? I have no idea, I have um, no idea how I found out about it. I have a an Indian friend that I met while I was touring. I do this this musical festival, music fest in America called Warp Tour. Yeah. Next, next year, next 2017 or 2018 is the last summer they're doing it. So. Oh really. Yeah, oh, so if you live in America and you want to come hang out, Warp Tour, that's a, that's a good – or if you live anywhere, come fly out to America. It's in all like the big cities. But anyway, I do this tour. I've been doing it for the past five years. It goes all across all the big cities. And I met this Indian girl in uh, Georgia, somewhere in Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. That's where we, we, were, we were living in this parking lot for like three days in Savannah, Georgia because we had three days off from the festival. Mm-hmm. And that's just where we parked for some reason. And my friend Byzanti is always just on Tinder looking for girls. And he met he met up with this girl, and they were having a house party. And we went to this house party, and there's an Indian girl there. And I'm in, interested into like all this Hindu stuff and stuff. So I kind of like, hey, you know, I'm into <laughs> hey. Indian stuff. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me about this. So she was like, you should go to this place called Kasol, Kasol. which is like Kasol, which is like kind of northern Indian ish. It's in a place called Himachal Pradesh. Yeah, which is in the Himalayas, really super nice. And uh, so Milana is near there, which is this ancient weed village. I don't know how old it is, but it's it's a you know an old place. They they have their own customs and their own traditions there. And the people they think or they have this belief that they're descendants from Alexander's army. So while Alexander was sort of making his way conquering through that part of the world some of the people from the army settled in this area and okay. they claim to be descendants from that lineage. And yeah, their main harvest there, their main crop, which they make their money from is weed. And everywhere in this area, there's just wild weed plants, you know, 10 feet tall on both sides of you. And you, know, you walk a path, you're walking like a, basically in a weed jungle. That's amazing. And there's just like, there's just little kids and families just making hash everywhere just like on the ground and they look like village people so it's like stepping back into ancient time almost and there's dogs running around and cows eating from the weed plants it's an intense place crazy man Uh, because weed is very common in india isn't it because i hear it literally grows like weed no pun intended it it grows all over the place yeah Yeah. at least the place i was the places i've been and you know you see these babas and these sadhus they smoke weed pretty much openly for the most part all over india or hash cool you know in kasol do, in Hinduism, like, do they? Um, is it very common for people to smoke? Weed? Yeah, especially that, yeah, especially people that worship Shiva. You yeah. find these people really into weed, and you see pictures of Shiva depicted with weed. Mm-hmm. I don't totally know the story. There's a deep story with it, and I don't want to regurgitate it all wrong. But <laughs> it's, it's an interesting it. story. Yeah, yeah I'll butcher it for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you see, especially in Kasol, that area that I was in, it's it's called Parvati Valley. Parvati is Shiva's wife. And so this whole little area is filled with weed, and people are just smoking hash everywhere in the open. And they, uh, Milana, this place that I went to, they make they're famous for making hash. That's what they're yeah. like. You know, this is why people go there. And oh, the trek was fucking horrible. <laughs> why? <laughs> I just had to. I had to stop like ten times because like getting from the road to Milana, the village itself, you have to like trek there to get there. It's maybe like two miles or something like that which is like i don't know three and a half kilometers maybe okay something like that so like oh it's just like really steep and just tiring and so so yeah, it was yeah. so steep and tiring yeah where there was like dogs following me around there's these little kids <laughs> that would carry this huge weed bundles on their back up Does, and down doesn't these seem that kind of stuff just make you uh seem like a, feel like, like a lazy piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel like, yeah, like I'm just sitting in my room, like we're on Skype, and these kids are these kids and old. My internet connection crying. is slow. What the fuck? Yeah, and yeah. here they are, no like carrying massive logs. There. No, that internet. was a tough thing. Yeah. It sucked. There was no internet almost anywhere, and if you did did get internet, oh, really? it was like shittiest internet ever. Fuck. Yeah. How was the yeah. hashish? You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like like. Uh, 
Oh, you come from California, I don't know, I'm, though, I'm don't mute, you? Immune. Yeah. No, I'm from Michigan. Okay. I'm from, no. Michigan. I'm from the East. It's okay. Midwest. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. The hash is okay, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't smoke tobacco. And in India, they, they don't have good weed there. So they smoke tobacco basically with everything. Uh, so okay. like we're it's smoking, like here as well actually tobacco. everyone smokes with tobacco yeah I don't so, the, so for me i don't smoke tobacco so that yeah. the, the tobacco fucked me up worse than the hash did mm. like i would get the tobacco like that head, head rush. rush yeah yeah the head rush a super grounding kind of feeling so that kind of overtook any sort of hash thing and i smoke a lot in america so like <laughs> you know i think maybe my my uh, you know my tolerance was a little up there yeah because in america you guys get like pretty good you get crazy trend. weed yeah Exactly, yeah, and you, you have names for it and everything. Because yeah, here you don't get you don't get that privilege for the most part. Like when you no? do, it's like, oh, I've got this new weed. It's called Bubblegum Kush. You're like, ooh, it's like such a like a rare thing. I, maybe it's getting yeah. more popular now. It depends on your deal. I remember the first fun. time I got my weed card here in Michigan, where I live, it's legal medicinally, and you can just walk into the store. I was thinking I was like maybe 21, got my weed card, yeah. walk into the store, and it's like walking into a candy store. There's just like buckets of weed filled with all these names vanilla kush candy kush bubblegum kush it's just like literally a candy store you is that actually a thing bubblegum bubble kush because I, I just i literally nah. just put two random words kush together it's totally it's totally a thing <laughs> that's hilarious fair enough yeah, totally yeah because i'm always so yeah. jealous when people can just go well i'm happy for you but at the same time deep down i'm jealous because it's so amazing yeah, it'll happen it'll happen everywhere maybe yeah because okay. here it's just like when you pick up it's just you just get weed it's just you never know what it what, what yeah. it's going to be Oh man, that's scary. Yeah, the weed, the weed in India was just like, ugh. it looked like someone threw it on the ground and kind of stepped on it, maybe a little bit. Ah, uh, like brick it looked, weed. It looked. Oh, it was definitely brick weed. Every maybe even worse than brick weed. Really? Yeah, it was horrible. I've never had the pleasure of smoking brick weed. Uh, I have in Costa Rica. There was brick weed there. Uh, I didn't find any weed at all in uh, the Middle East, but I found some hash in Egypt. And how illegal is weed over there? Very illegal. You get caught with. <laughs> You get caught with any sort of drugs over over there, you get some serious time, especially in Egypt. You know, I had I was staying with a, a friend of mine there, yeah, and she used to tell me all kinds of crazy stories. She's like a badass little. She's like maybe five foot, you know, really small girl, and she's a school teacher. She teaches history to like high school students, and there was a revolution in Egypt in like 2011 or something like this. Mm. I don't remember the exact year, where the whole country stopped. No school, no work. Everyone was revolting. You know, there was a big sort of no no riots or anything like that. But there was uh, the people were fighting with the the military, and she crashed her car into oh, the wow. side of it like a military vehicle, and her car was all beat up. Anyway, she was a badass person. Oh. And I was staying with her, That's and intense. she was telling me all kinds of crazy stuff about like her friend getting caught with hash, and he got like eleven years in prison for it. He was like becoming like a he was working on his PhD and like you know. Oh, that's fine. Someone like if you were to get caught in America, they would be like they would look at wh- who you were. Oh, he's going to school, getting his PhD and stuff like that. They'd be you know a little They'll bit take that into account. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, here he got eleven years, and that's it. Period. Another that crazy sucks, story. She was telling. Like yeah, hearing was, that kind uh, of shit just makes me so angry. It's like really like for for a fucking plant. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, eleven yeah. Egypt, years, man. Eleven years. Egypt was. Uh, Jesus. It was. It was really nice. The people in Egypt were great people, but there was definitely a radiance of sort of like any second something could just fucking happen. Like uh, the cops and stuff, military everywhere, guns, you know, kind of what you expect the Middle East to look like a bit. Yeah. Well, sort of like when I went to Mexico, it's just all the cops is like full on SWAT, machine gun or shotgun. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of overkill. But everyone smokes weed like, there anyway, so it's like doesn't doesn't really yeah. matter. Is it, is it weed legal in Mexico? I think no, right? no, it's illegal. But if you have, according to a, a Mexican friend of mine, he said that if you have less than like three grams or something like that, they just throw it away. It's okay. like yeah, whatever. That they don't. Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. I remember in Mexico actually, this is one of my most authentic Mexican experiences. Is when I went to go uh, pick up my laundry. This is downtown Mexico, just like really close to the center. And I pick Mexico up my city. Yeah, Mexico City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pick up my laundry, and then this, I don't know, this gangster-looking dude oh, just God. pulls out this massive blunt, like this big, that thick, crazy. And he's like, "Oh yeah," like obviously talking in Spanish. Oh, do you, do you Australians like weed? I'm like, "Give me that." Of course we like weed. And <laughs> yeah, and we just started smoking it literally in the laundry place, in like the most public area ever. Like they seriously do not give a shit when it comes to weed apparently it's a very mexican thing just to smoke weed and yeah yeah 
in yeah. public. But that was cool. Then I went to uh, meet up with my girlfriend, just blazed as. I'm like, guess what I did? <laughs> you should have came with me. She's like, oh, you, you go pick up the laundry and I'll, you know, continue shopping. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. That's what you get. And then she was like yeah, jealous. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I found myself in a bunch of weird sort of situations like that while traveling. <laughs> it's, just hard, like... it's hard to deny it, man, when, when it comes. It's like, here you go. Yeah. It's like on a, on a golden plate. It's like, yeah. it'll be rude for me not to, right? Yeah. You were traveling too, right? Just You were just in Thailand while I was in India, right? Um, yeah, I think you Somewhere. went to India just as I got back home. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Thailand, yeah. Cambodia, and uh, Vietnam. Yeah, nice. it was just yeah, fucking epic. I would love to make my way out there one day. Yeah, you like Thailand in terms, yeah, like the fruit is amazing. Obviously, like getting into the Buddhism culture and all that was incredible. Yeah. yeah. I was going to do a Vipassana. But I wasn't ready. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do 10 days. Maybe I'll just start with two days. That's my next, the next thing. I, I think in March, I'm going to go to India. I think that's something I'm going to be into is maybe going to like Rishikesh and doing like a 10-day retreat or something yeah. like that. So you've never done yeah, feeling, a Pashna before? No, I've never, I've never done it, but I'm feeling called to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Because yeah. like um, if I did the 10-day, it would have been out of ego because I, I just inside, I'm like, no, nah, I don't feel ready. I'll, I don't know. I feel like I'd have like a psychotic breakdown. Yeah. I've done things like where stage. I've done silent. I've done silent days. Like where I just didn't say anything all day, like just you know stayed quiet, and it's really weird what happens when you do that because like yeah. you find yourself okay, it's been twenty four hours, and it's like fuck, I don't have anything to say. It's like what do I what do I come like what is worthy enough for me to say now? And, and what did weird. you, you notice know, like, comes up like when you're just not talking for that long? Your th- your thoughts clear up a bit. It's yeah. not as chaotic in your head. Yeah, definitely. It was really interesting. I like to practice that more. I've only done it a, twice, interesting. but that's definitely a practice yeah. I'd like to try. Well, like I said, yeah. I did the two-day meditation, the two-day silent retreat, uh, which I found oh, yeah. a lot of benefits, even just two days. Um, yeah, how did you find, did you find your thoughts were a lot more clear? Yeah, or for sure, find- definitely, yeah. and a lot more present. And it was cool because he taught us, it wasn't just like, um, you know, just sitting down, closing your eyes and doing the traditional meditation. We did, he taught us like walking meditation, active meditation, mindful, mindfully eating, which is like something yeah. that I struggle with because when I have food, it's just, Wah! instead yeah, of actually same. sitting there and like, really mindfully eating like just bit yeah. by bit um yeah it's fucking awesome and obviously just learning about more about buddhism in depth it's pretty cool yeah that's I, li- I like to do that too to get more into buddhism i don't know anything about it it's um it's very practical actually because a lot of people well a lot of buddhists believe that let's say oh, in reincarnation let's say and all this mystical stuff but the buddha himself didn't concern himself he didn't actually talk about yeah. that at all which i found interesting yeah. i'm like oh really um, yeah, he wasn't a very metaphysical guy. Nah, he, yeah, he he thinks that like if anything is like in the mind and speculative, it's not really worth kind of pursuing. Yeah, it's just kind of like an end, yeah, it's endless. It is, yeah, yeah. I learned that the hard way. It's just a never ending, never ending rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, just chasing, chasing something, chasing nothing. You know, it's like walking on like those little uh, those machines that you work out on. What are those things called? Oh, Where you run on those things? Yeah, it's like a treadmill. <laughs> Questioning. Yeah. Because one question just leads to another question, you know, ultimately. Exactly. And you can't really, yeah, like I said, it's all in your mind. So you're never really going to prove anything. And I, th- I think it's like, I'm getting to the stage now where it's like, I have to be okay with just not knowing that I'm never really going to know. Yeah. yeah. And it I sucks. Like that, that one is like, I really struggle with that one because I'm very rational and logical in, in my head. And it's like, I just yeah, need to me know. Too. I'm a very curious person. That's what got me into like psychedelics in the first place. I'm like, oh, I've got yeah, to try same, these things. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you found I think out you find, too. Huh? Yeah, I think you find kind of similar characteristics spread out with these kind of people that are into psychedelics, like maybe like you or me or these other people that are into it. You find like very similar kind of like we're inquisitive. We want to, we're kind of, you know, into the, the mysterious side of things and wanting, wanting to understand what that is. Yeah, just life yeah, in I general. I think it's interesting. Yeah, life in general. I, feel, I find it interesting, the people that sort of attract themselves to these things. Yeah, were you always like a curious child? Yeah, when you were yeah, young, t- totally. Yeah, totally. I was. I was you were a into seeker. the occult you were a and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, I remember being like so young and being like proper into witchcraft, like going to the library and being like, "I'm gonna do a spell." Oh shit! You know, just a total weirdo. I was such a weirdo, and that led me to like people like Aleister Crowley, who would talk about doing things like peyote, and I kind of wrote it off. I was so young that I kind of just kind of like, oh. He's taking weird drugs and like meeting mm. aliens and stuff like that because he talked about that. 
Oh, meeting really? beings. Yeah, he talks about meeting beings on in psychedelic states and stuff like that. But what was his name again? And Alex. Uh, what? Alistair Crowley. Crowley. Isn't he like Crowley. an evil Crowley. Satanist? Some something like that. Yes, yeah, people think that you know, but okay. not really. Not really. If you get into him, he's kind of just like just weird kind of a cult okay. guy. You know, sort of mysterious person. Interesting guy. I don't know. Maybe he was done some evil things. I don't know him too well, but uh, interesting nonetheless. You know. But um, so he was like a big introduction to me just because I was I don't know why I was in, so interested into it. Just I guess like the idea of there being magic was just attracted to me. I don't know. You know, mm. it's just an attractive idea. And that I think that drive and that curiosity for like just, you know, the mystery of the universe and that there being something more something hidden beyond what beyond my senses you know mm. that led me to taking psychedelics and then sort of being like oh shit there actually is something more out there so how old were there you is something. when you when i took my my first psychedelic experience i was about 21 okay uh, me too okay so we took yeah. the same yeah yeah i was com- i was pretty much sober completely until then like really? i still i don't drink i've been drunk maybe three times in my life maybe four times i can't say the same so but I'm, I'm australian, australian yeah i'm australian. not a big Good drinker i don't smoke cigarettes I started smoking weed when about 21 also. Oh, man. That's something that I so wish that I uh, delayed, smoking weed. Because I just find the massive difference for people who start smoking weed really young in life. They get m- yeah. more so the negative effects than the positive mm-hmm. versus people who start smoking weed later in life. Yeah, they get more I'm positive really stuff. thankful. Yeah, and that's I'm what thankful. I've noticed. Ev- literally every single person I've ever met who's smoked really young uh, isn't yeah. usually motivated when they smoke weed. You know, that's why I like Joe Rogan, for example, he's such a advocate of marijuana because he's like, he started smoking weed late and it just helps him with his creativity, doesn't make him lazy. And for him, he can't even understand that like weed doesn't make you lazy. But for most people that I've met anyway, definitely does. It definitely yeah, amplifies Joe... my laziness for sure. Yeah, it does for me too, definitely. <laughs> I, think, I think that's abuse of it though. Yeah, 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 think, for sure. I think if you abuse it, it, it you get those kind of negative side effects. Which I but did. Joe, so. Rogan, Joe Rogan says, like, you're just a lazy fuck. It ain't yeah. the weed. No, it's true. It's true. I'm a lazy <laughs> yeah, fuck, and the weed is So just... am I. I definitely am. <laughs> it's just a, giving me an excuse to be like, ah, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, man, I, I started smoking when I was, like, 12, something, like, it's ridiculous, man. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And ever since I got hired, that's all I gave a shit about. It's like, it was the best <laughs> thing ever. And alcohol, it of is. course. Yeah, because people drink a lot. Yeah. yeah, that laziness thing has been like beating me up lately. Like I'm just now. Yeah. I just I turned 25 in June. I still live at my mom's house, but I, you know I travel so much that I don't really want to get a place and be like, oh, I'm going to India for a month and then have to be stuck paying rent, you know, in mm. L.A. or something like that. Yeah. So like, yeah, having a home base at my mom's house has been like a blessing for me. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm like feeling my the sort of comfort of my house. Like I have, I don't know, you know, no bills. And it's really kind of giving me this comfort that I think is enabling me to be a little bit lazy. Dude. And I, I'm just right. fucking just ready to break out of it. Like, I've been looking at houses and stuff like that, and I'm just ready for yeah, that. Yeah, you got to get out. Oh, it's funny because you you said you're 25. I'm 25 as well. Yeah. And, like, I live in mom's house, and it's, like, it's the yeah. same. It's a blessing. It's also when I have to pay bills and blah, blah, blah. But it's, like, it's too comforting, man. And like just yeah. staying in your room, for example, just triggers too many old unconscious behavior patterns. Dude, this is, it holds, this is the it's, house I grew it's a bottleneck. Up in. Yeah, exactly. Same. So it's yeah. like it's a bottleneck, and you know, yeah. no matter my, how much. Friend, yeah, yeah. My friend Andrew that I do warp tour with, he just moved out of his parents' house and he got his own apartment and stuff like that. And he's just like, man, you have no idea the inspiration I have now. Like mm. being in my room, like where I grew up in, is just so limiting. Like I can only take my inspiration so far because of like, it's just like this box of comfort that i'm in i'm not able to mm. break out of it so he said moving was like you know it's just been such like a an opening an expanding of the horizon and I, that's why i'm just i need that in my life right now you know yes yeah, I'm, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to move out so yeah i can't wait that's i need to get sense. out of here because you need your own space man that's the thing it's like yeah yeah especially right now in this period of our lives i feel like this is five is a big turning point yes yeah, mm. so it, it is a turning point it's like really the like the, the steps into becoming like an adult on like the real level, you know, you're like really laying yeah, an actual adult. The, like, I think that the, yeah, I, the, the fact that, um, you know, you're considered an adult when you're 18 is ridiculous to me. Yeah. Like, no, I, I'm 25. still a kid now at 25. I let feel al- like I am too. <laughs> let alone fucking 18, man. I know. Look at us. So we have facial hair. We're not kids. Yeah, and I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Also, actually, yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you about your, 
YouTube channel because it's interesting because you've had you've had a YouTube channel for ages, well, like five six years or something like that, right? Yeah, something like that. Um, too long. Yeah, too, too long. And it's just interesting seeing the evolution of your channel and like now. My channel, my channel is a weird. One. Yeah, it's like you have a, It seems like you have an emphasis on uh, spirituality these days. Yeah, nowadays, definitely. Yeah, it's interesting to if you if I don't know who would ever want to do this, but if you watch the my first <laughs> video and watch the evolution of myself, because I never wanted. I, there was a period in my of my life where I was embarrassed of my old videos. Like, oh fuck, that's just like the worst representation of who I am. Mm. But like, I switched that perspective to watching the growth of myself. And it's just hilarious to watch. Like, I was such a weirdo back in the day. But, uh, yeah, mostly it's nowadays I talk about, like, psychedelics, spirituality, and traveling. Can you – how did you – like, why did you start your YouTube channel to begin to with? Be- and how – and what kind of catalyzed the change in your approach? Yeah. So there's this guy. Uh, he was a YouTuber. I don't know if he's still making YouTube videos. His name was Mitchell Davis. This is like back in like the MySpace days, you oh, know. Oh shit! He was, okay. he was like a scene kid, fucking coolest kid ever, you know, coolest scene kid in the world. <laughs> scene and kid. Uh, yeah. he was uh, friends with one of my friends, my best friend at the time. And Mitchell had a huge YouTube channel, and uh, he was like, "You should make videos to my friend." And my friend was like, "To me, you should make videos. We should do this thing together." And we did this thing together which ultimately became Stay Happy, Stay Weird, which is the clothing company that I'm still today running. And it kind of nice. went from being a YouTube duo to becoming a clothing line. Nice. And uh, my friend, he kind of, we went separate ways eventually. And he is doing his own thing now in life and gave up on the internet game. And uh, yeah, that it's just, just sort of Mitchell Davis telling my friend to start a YouTube channel was the reason I started. No, no crazy story. I wish I had a cooler story. <laughs> Like, you know, I was depressed and YouTube yeah. was, you know, the answer me. No, no crazy stories. That's pretty much it. But it did, did help me a lot, you know, being on YouTube. It has helped me a lot in a lot of different ways in my life. It's a weird gig, isn't it? Like constantly it's editing really yourself weird. and like... It's really weird, yeah. It's weird, yeah. And I switched. I was making silly videos. We were kind of like, we were, you know, kind of seeing kids had like, you know... We called ourselves emo kids. Yeah, you know, we, we, we claim that title. We we're like, yeah, we're emo, whatever, because people <laughs> would always call us yeah. emo fags, or whatever, in the comments. So we we're like, yeah, we're emo, emo fags. <laughs> whatever, you know, yeah. YouTube comments. Yeah. And um, so once him and I really split ways, is when I really started diving deep into psychedelics, and I was already interested in this stuff, you know, to begin with. But I never thought people wanted to hear about that. I was like, no one wants to hear me talk about, you know, psychedelics and stuff like that. Like, there's not like I didn't think there was a market for it. So I really was playing into this role of like what I thought YouTube wanted. Yeah, you know that yeah. this, this sort of pop YouTube culture. So it's like the you know conflicts, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like the yeah, yeah. The finers and stuff like that. Like the I was finer. into that. Jake, like, I thought, are you a Jake like, Paula? This, thought, <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Like an emo Jake Paula. <laughs> an emo Jake Paula. <laughs> yeah, that was my thing. And uh, uh, it's gonna be the title of this video. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, no. I yeah. just got sick of it. I just got yeah. sick of it. I was like, I just couldn't sustain it anymore. And psychedelics were just beating my ass. And I was just like, you know, whatever. I'm just going to talk about what I want to talk about. And just mm. whatever. You know, however it turns out is how it's meant to turn out. I can't keep playing this kind of role. It makes me cringe when I watch myself. And I just mm. don't feel fulfilled. And it's kind of spiritually void and it's like you're so, holding on to this this idea yeah. i don't know yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's hard it letting go my, though it is yeah it reminds me of my childhood a little bit you know like i was feel like that was a, that whole little thing you know like myspace and all that kind of stuff it was like a childhood thing for me mm. and it was a phase i was holding on to you know and try to drag it out as long as i could but yeah i think this is uh this is who i am i think you know and i even back then when i look back at my life this is always who i've been is this kind of person that was chasing this sort of whatever this is you know this mm. life and being into the idea of being with it you know yeah. flowing with it well you can tell yeah. man that's like a reason why i really appreciate your videos because you come off yeah. really authentic you're just being who you are oh, and that's what yeah. the you know well pretty much all the best youtubers are the ones who are just doing what they do i don't know they create yeah. their own culture instead of following what's, whatever's popular and that can work in the short term but i don't know it's not sustainable yeah, it, for your own, like, I don't know, for your own sanity, it's not, it's not sustainable. Yeah, I agree. Um, what, so what substance was it 
that you had your first trip? My first trip yeah. was uh, was mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. So I was. Uh, what What was with the dose? My, with my, uh, I think we maybe split an eighth, so about half of an eighth. Eighth. What's it an eighth? Is an eighth a quarter? An eighth, I don't three, know. Three, three point five grams. Uh, oh, okay. Well, it's pretty decent. So we, pretty decent dose. Yeah, decent size. Yes, and we split that. Okay. We didn't have no idea. Yeah, we yeah we split it. So one one okay. and a half grams okay. each. Okay. Which is still it's still okay. You know you can go to deep places with that if they're oh good, yeah for good sure mushrooms. yeah. I've heard a lot of people here um, tell me stories about the first time they take mushroom. They literally have hundreds, literally hundreds. Oh god, no, that's and, a and that's yeah, it's always a horrible experience, and they're just turned off forever, which I can understand. Yeah. But, so okay. we were in a we're sitting in the living room. We were just kind of hanging out, you know. I didn't mm. really know what to expect. I had Joe Rogan as a sort of context, and I knew about Terrence McKenna. Yeah. And I was, okay. you know, yeah. I so I said I had this context already, you know. And uh, okay. so me and my ex girlfriend were just sitting there, just kind of waiting for it to come on. And uh, I remember looking at we were listening to like music TV or something like that. And they had these pictures of the artists that were playing, and they just looked completely ridiculous, you know, like their <laughs> eyes were all shifting around. Yeah. And I remember looking at the hallway. And the shadow from the hallway looked like it was creeping slowly towards me. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, it just started getting crazy, a bad little trip. spooky. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, the bad trip feeling came on. Like, oh, God, there's something spooky over in that darkness over there. Yeah. So I was like, I got to get out of here. I got to go outside. It was daytime outside. So I opened the door to go outside. And it's seriously like opening. It's like being born or something. It was like the first time I've ever seen anything. Like it was the most amazing thing I ever seen. Like I like remember being looking present? at the, just like looking outside and being blown away by like oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like I remember looking shit, at the this colors was here the whole time, and I never really yeah, like, looked at it this way. Fuck? Wow. Yeah, it was like yeah. it was like the first time I opened my eyes. Yeah, yeah. I remember looking at the the, the grass in the front yard, hmm. and I could see every shade of color in the grass, like perfectly, like every pigment and every just everything, and then like the all the blues in the sky, and I remember just being like. Like what the fuck? It was <laughs> the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So that was my first my first mushroom trip, and it was really spiritual for me. I, I felt really connected to Earth and really grounded. And I I remember being like, this is how humans are supposed to feel. That was a mm. reoccurring thought I kept repeating to myself. Like, like it's our is, original state of consciousness. Just like, like this is what this is what we were doing. Like this is what our ancestors were doing. Yeah. They were taking these sort of things. And they were like looking at this same moon that I'm just like in awe over. Like exactly, there's this weird yeah. connection. There it's like we need drugs to now to be able to appreciate everything yeah, that right? they, they already appreciate it every day. Like yeah. 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 And I think that comes from thoughts. We're we're so distracted from our thoughts that we have all these sort of oh, yeah. worries that we're attached to because of our culture, you know, like being brought up in a capitalistic culture and being bombarded with like you have to be this or, you know, you have mm -hmm. to live this lifestyle and portray this sort, sort, sort of image. I think this really uh, keeps us in this distracted sort of circular realm of thoughts that these people, our ancestors, didn't have to deal with. They didn't have these sort of things to worry about that, you know, these sort of, I don't know, egomaniac things that we cling to. Oh, yeah. And more and more so labels th that we have. Yeah, so I think, I think they were tuned into that more. Yeah. They, were, they were more able perceive that than we are now because we're so worried about things that aren't really there you know yeah, yeah. and not to mention all the overstimulation and stuff like it's yeah crazy. It's way overstimulation how can way you compare like how can you give a kid who's playing like call of duty every day to hey go outside enjoy that tree it's like it's not going to do anything hey, you know you know every human that's ever existed has looked at that same sky <laughs> okay cool yeah. i have fucking unlimited knowledge in my computer right now exactly. i don't know about that level up and fucking upgrade yeah my armor i got and world shit. of warcraft I have to like level up my mage. <laughs> Fuck, people still play that, man. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, of but anyways, yeah. So did but that did that experience change your perspective after that? Like, did it have long term effects? Yeah, yeah. Like, looking it did. back, yeah, yeah, definitely did. It was like it was really solidified my spiritual path for me because, like, at this time I was on YouTube and I was doing kind of like. Uh, maybe like kind of spiritual influence videos, but kind of not through that language. Mm. Like I made a video called stay happy and it was all about how to stay positive. So I was like mm. doing those kind of videos, like kind of self-help videos. So like this did that for me, the psychedelic experience. 
it was like a reading like having like a self help the best help self help book downloaded directly into me. Mm. And it was like solidified my <clears throat> spiritual path and solidified that like you know, like fuck. There's like there's there's just something going on bigger than the thing I'm paying attention to. Mm. It's kind of like a slap to the face, like, oh whoa, yeah, absolutely fuck? absolutely yeah. a slap yeah. the, absolutely a slap in the face. And yeah, I've just been riding that the tidal wave of that ever since. You did mushrooms in the jungle? No, it was. I no, did do mushrooms. That, that's, yeah, I'm not talking about your first time, but like I remember yeah. seeing a, a video. Was Twice. It Co- Costa Rica, was it? Costa Rica, yeah. I did. That? I did. A, I did uh, mushrooms. I don't know the dose. It was made into a chocolate. Nice. It was pretty strong. It was a strong little dose, but it was on the beach in a little a little place called Dominical. Mm. And it's this beautiful little beach town. And it was just camping, just sleeping on the beach, had a tent, and I was just living in this tent, nice. took some mushrooms, had some crazy visions of uh, serpents, which is a weird thing that seems, I don't know if I was like connecting to mm. some, you know, uh, jungle serpent. This is like a reoccurring theme you know, with be, ayahuasca. Could be the environment. The jung- yeah, yeah, it could you be, because I've seen serpents uh, in ayahuasca, I, but I've never seen. The thing seen... is, I see, I see serpents all the time. When I take psychedelics, I don't know why. It's really a reoccurring. What do you think that means? Vision. Do you think it's like a I have no, re- recurring no archetype? No I have idea. no idea. Okay. Like I did, I took LSD in Petra and Jordan, which was <laughs> fuck, which was insane. I, I that, that was one of the craziest things I've ever done in my life. And I remember towards the end of the day, because they closed Petra at maybe six p.m. or something like that. So I was still tripping balls by then, and I went off into the desert kind of, you know, it's just the middle East is kind of deserty. And I just went off and was meditating hmm. and was having crazy serpent visions there too. Hmm. And it was really, weird. it was really biblical almost being there. I don't know if that's just I think because there's something there. Cause if you're constantly seeing serpents and stuff, it's gotta be. Yeah. There's something. something there for sure. Yeah. I don't know what it is. And my DMT trip, serpents came to me. Fuck. Yeah. Yes. I, I've but, only, like I said, I've only got serpents. I've only seen serpents during one vision. Uh, through ayahuasca really? that's it yeah nothing else DMT I kept do you have any reoccurring visions um in ayahuasca it would just be the the feeling of a presence of other shamans but spirit like they weren't actually there but I just felt them there like kind of helping what you what do you like, think about the... those it's just, so this is like this is probably the biggest thing that has kept me most attracted to the psychedelic experience okay is like these sort of external intelligences these sort of disembodied consciousnesses that are like they come to you and they come to you in the form of telepathic emotions or they come to you as these animal looking people say like dr sitos or something like that like these little doctors that come on you i haven't i haven't experienced this personally but so many people have heard the same thing like these little minion things that come and they like fix you crazy yeah like the machine elves yeah sort of yeah, I've never seen machine yeah. elves, so I don't know. I've never seen machine that. elves either. I've I've had uh, these mushroom elves, <laughs> mushroom gnomes, these gnome things. What did they have like and mushroom were, caps for heads or something? Yeah, no, they were like they looked like garden gnomes. A little okay, bit. And, they, and they were sort of like floating around me, and they were pointing at me and like laughing at me and telling me all the horrible shit I've done in my life. <laughs> really, really weird. This is a, this is why you're a shit cunt. I'm gonna go through the ages of. 12 to 16 and everything that you've ever done bad. Oh, no, please. Do you think, so do you think, what do you think this is? Do you think this is like just a way for our brain to make contact with itself so it takes the form of some, something? Or do you think we're actually, you think we're like tuning in, breaking the boundaries of the, you know, the the limitations of our senses and tuning tuning into something that exists already? All right, I'll give a disclaimer, and let's just say that I don't know shit. I really don't. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, I and, you. How of can you course yeah, of course. And I like I bounce between the more ah, oh, it must be just our mind, or no, this has to be something because it feels so overwhelmingly powerful that it's like this can't just be inside my brain. But I don't know. I think that it's like I think it is something that's inside our mind, but it's like I think what Jung called the the collective unconscious where this it's yeah. like this collective thing that's a part of everyone's psyche that we're all right. tethered to so in a sense it's like it's not just in our mind it's like we're connected right. to this thing that's tethered to our mind but it's not necessarily related to uh, just our personal unconscious that's what i i think yeah yeah so but i don't know like the- i get confused yeah because every experience that i have it kind of contradicts the last one and then it's like ah yeah. i don't even know anymore 
But yeah, for what do you me, think? I think it's real. I don't know. I, like I, that, that's that's my my when I'm like right now, I would question it because I haven't had that experience for a long time. Mm. But when I have those experiences, I come back completely in belief that it's mm. absolutely real. You know, right now it's been a while. I'm kind of you know been living through my ego and you know questioning myself about things like that mystical things but like when i have those experiences they seem undoubtedly real and yeah it, maybe it's in our mind but what it, does that even it, mean yeah you know? exactly just because it's in our mind they, it doesn't make it any less profound just don't I, I don't i know i'm not a scientist but I, as far as i'm aware science says that this experience that we're currently experiencing is just a manifestation of our mind you know what we're experiencing is you know, a simulation of our body, yeah. a simulation of our senses. Like this holographic so we can, simulation, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems like that in a way. Yeah, that's it what I'm saying. Like, yeah. So when people say like, "Oh, it's just in your mind," they try to downplay it. For me, it does not make it any less profound, no, it does, whether it it's outside it, or inside. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I definitely do think that psychedelics dissolves certain boundaries that are there anyway, but we just can't perceive because it, otherwise, it'd just be way too overwhelming. You know. Yeah, of yeah. course. So How it's can like, we live? It's in, and it's important to stay grounded in, in this. Like we're in, we're in this reality for a reason, I believe. And it's like, it at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's good to go into that space and just see outside yourself. But at the same time, maybe not go too much into that world and stay too ungrounded and just living in the ether either. Yeah. It's like a balance. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, well, with the those experiences that you're saying that you see like entities yeah. and whatnot. Are those usually from like really high doses or it doesn't really matter? Do you still get those no, experiences? No, it seems to happen doses? to me a lot. It seems, yeah? well, because the way I take psychedelics, I, for one, don't usually ever do it with people. I find when I yeah, do do it with people, that. it's it's less of a spiritual experience and more of like, you know, visuals and sort of more maybe fun. still introspective, but mm. not as the depths that you can get if you're by yourself. Mm. And I find when I'm with people, I'm like, are they okay? Like, am I doing something weird? I find I, I go through all these different insecurities that I don't go through if I'm by myself. And for me, when I take psychedelics, I want to, I'm taking it because I want to go deep. Like I want to mm. like, you know, not have know, an anchor know. there to like pull you down. You yeah, just yeah, exactly. Sh- kind of let go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting yeah. when you say like, tripping with someone else, you might be concerned with them. And that's why there's a lot of um, ayahuasca retreats. Every one that I've been to anyway, they say that if you do bring your partner, that you shouldn't like sit next to them, that you should sit completely opposite ends of the maloca yeah. because it's like, I don't know, let's say you're going through your journey, then you hear your partner like start crying or whatever. And then it's like, right, fuck you up. want, yeah, your initial instinct is like to help her. But really all you're doing is just going to interrupt her process and your process yeah, exactly. and you're not helping exactly. anyone. But it's like this ego yeah. thing like, no, I'm the man. I have to protect her. It's exactly. like, no, you, you're just kind of ruining yeah. everything. So for me, mm. what's worked best for me to have a spiritual or like sort of religious or mystical experience, the kind of experience that they talk about in the Bible, you know, like that Moses was having and any kind of spiritual, ex- you know, the burning tradition bush. has. Yeah. yeah, they have all these traditions, you know, whether it be Soma or the people of South America. So for me, the way to have these experiences that these shamans and these yogis are talking about is to do it in that sort of respect, to do it like in darkness, like McKenna, you know, recommends, or to do it in nature, mm. or in. But that being said, interesting because I found out with that how McKenna said, "Yeah, five grams of silent darkness." He didn't yeah. necessarily agree with that in these later years of life. It's more his fans no. are just saying that as well. So it's just, they really yeah. held on. Yeah, to for that. real, they held on to that because he had a horrifying yeah. trip. And I don't think, yeah, it's, according to my knowledge, McKenna didn't actually have a heavy trip again after that crazy yeah, mushroom I, I trip he I had. Did, I, I did hear that. Yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, and I had that, that a point. horrifying trip earlier this year. And I, I remember during it, I was like, oh, fuck. That's why McKenna stopped tripping. <laughs> this is like, it can be terrifying. It's like the curtains behind reality is like, it's all meaningless. You're fucked. Ha, ha, ha. Kind of thing. But yeah. that's the way. That's the way to do it. If you want to have like that, yeah. that experience that, requires no belief that's the way mm. to do it because it's no it's no stimulation because like when you're by yourself at night yeah. it's like you've got no music you've got no visual stimulation you don't have someone there it's the same thing your body does when you go to sleep it goes into itself yeah. and you experience this dream world or something like that except on the mushrooms you're lucid and on mushrooms so it's like yeah you know, yeah you're exactly in a, you're and in some there's, there's um there, have you ever heard of those like d- dark room silent meditations or something? 
There are these retreats mm. that you go to and you're literally in a dark room for like, I don't know, huh. days or whatever. And then you have full on experiences. Just the absence of light. That. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds yeah. intense. I would like to do that. Do yeah. something like that. Yeah. I've had some crazy visions in being in uh, isolation tanks also. Yeah. You go into that the isolation tank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Joe Rogan turned me to those. If you, do, if you do an isolation tank for like two hours, it gets pretty trippy yeah. as far as like, you go. Yeah. You go really into yourself and you're really able to be into like a thought space that's like you can navigate it's like you're living inside that thought space mm. it's really cool it's really I, interesting i did a two hour like most of the sessions that i've done have only been one hour and like maybe around the 45 minute mark that's when i just start to kind of fall into that yeah. hypnagogic yep. kind of dream state but I, the first time i did the two hour session a bit of salt water went in my eye oh, no. <laughs> and that obviously just ruined the whole fucking experience yeah, I think yeah. for me the hour mark is when careful. it starts like the hour marks where I start getting deep. Mm. And then you know for a little for like a couple minutes, 10 minutes I'll I'll fall out of that like oh shit, I'm getting deep. And then it'll knock me out of it. It's your mind. Yeah. And then, it's like am I doing it? Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Come the come the 2 hour mark though, you're just like wow. <laughs> in like the cosmos, you know. So you especially fall, so you, like, you get visuals and all that in the when you did the two hours, it wasn't session. so much. I mean, yeah, you you get like the kind of visual. Not that, that visuals matter, like, by the way. I think they're com- overrated. Com- they're like the most overrated yeah, aspect of the psychedelic experience, and it can actually be a distraction when the visuals are too intense and too crisp yeah. and too like fireworks. Um, yeah, it can like kind of take told, you away. The, the beings told McKenna, "Don't give in to astonishment. Yes, you know, like exactly. pay attention. Be here now. Don't don't pay attention to all this shit that's happening." Yeah, that's why I prefer the the trips that the visuals are like sort of mild yeah. like i like a little cause but like it, yeah it's eye candy but it doesn't really yeah serve it wasn't purpose. too psychedelic so. no it wasn't psychedelic for me but it was like you could see visuals like if you're in a dark room and you're staring at the ceiling mm. you know you kind of see those visuals or whatever you know whatever it is or when you rub your eyes is you see kind of visuals like that in the actually sticker i like did those at least. floaters or whatever yeah yeah those little guys yeah and and um Actually, I want to ask you, what is your most profound trip you've ever had? Was it the first one that you had? or was it... My most profound trip. Yeah, the one that really uh, changed your life the most dramatically, or at least your perception on reality, or yourself, yeah. maybe. Yeah, okay, so I took mushrooms again, and this time I did it in a fucking weird way. Like, I was yeah. a weirdo about this, like, no doubt. I was, like, bowing to the mushrooms and, like, praying to them and saying, like, please give me this, like, intense experience. I want to experience, like something that's gonna blow my mind oh shit be careful what you and it wish did for. It, it totally did yeah be careful what you wish for so i took like i think it was like four grams or something like this and i was gonna go watch the sun go down so a pretty heavy dose yeah it's pretty I, mixed, intense. I mixed it with mixed it with peanut butter and uh i was just sitting out in the woods in this little field and i was like oh it's gonna be nice i watched the sun go down mm. No, not at all. It was horrible. I was puking. Oh, shit. I was puking, and the trees were talking to me. The flower was telling me how sad it was. Aliens were coming to me. Fucking weird. I was hearing these little like beep 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 pop boop boop. All these little weird machine alien noises, all surrounding me. And then all of a sudden, I came across. And this sounds so ridiculous to say out loud, and I'm I'm always hesitant to talk about this story. But this hey, is my man, most no judgment here. I've, my most, I've, I've my seen most it profound all. psychedelic trip. <laughs> so this Lord of the Rings esque spirit, <sighs> or just like voice, comes out of nowhere, and it's just like, "What do you want? Like, why are you <laughs> oh, here?" And I'm just like, "Fuck!" Like I was totally unprepared for that question. Like, <laughs> Am I talking to Sauron right now? <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. I like that was my answer to it was, "Fuck." I don't know why I'm here. I'm just here. And it eventually was like, well, what do you want to know? What, what, what question do you want to know? Like a genie coming to me and saying like, what wish do you have? What question do you want to know? And it allowed me to ask all kinds of questions. Like I remember talking to it. I remember saying like, like asking what consciousness is and all these kinds of questions. And it told me that everything in life, everything in existence, this is what the spirit said, is made up of this kind of eternal unchanging energy and this is what we call consciousness Mm. everything is made up of this and i was i remember asking i was like even what do you mean everything like even this rock you're telling me this rock is made out of consciousness like this rock is alive and it was like yeah everything is alive everything has got the Mm. same unis that you have it just expresses it in a different way in whatever sort of body it's in a rock body it's got it's a rock it doesn't need to eat food and talk 
Fuck. And that's what it, yeah, that's what it told me. And it told me reincarnation is, is real. It said that we become reincarnated. We take a body that can fulfill the sort of like desires that we cling to. So if like you're a super greedy person, you're gonna have to take a body to work those to work that out. Mm. I don't I don't totally you know maybe it's like it works as like ho- however self realized you become. I don't totally know how it works, but mm. but everyone yeah, has like just, their personalized yeah, they, destiny. Kind of I like suppose. A, yeah, yeah, sense. like. I guess kind of like karma. It seemed like kind of what the Hindus were trying to get at yeah. is what so, this thing so was telling me. Do yeah. you believe that what we do in this life will affect where we go next? Or is it all doesn't really matter in the end? I think I, I think it does have an effect, but I think only to the extent of our realization. Like if we're just completely lost in the sauce, if we're just like totally egotistical, we're going to take a body again that's going to – you know, because consciousness is like this vibrating thing, so it's gonna grab a hold of a body that is vibrating at the frequency it's vibrating at, like a radio station or something. You know, mm. you know. So like right now, this sort of whatever frequency we're on, this is the body that resonates with that frequency. This is the radio station that emits that frequency. Mm. This body right now. So when we die, whatever our consciousness is vibrating on, given you know the process and work we've gone through in this lifetime, will determine the sort mm. of next. The next incarnation and that's uh, what the spirit uh, for those listening at home those skeptics even if what we do in this life really doesn't matter i think Skeptic. you should i think you should still live this life as if it matters where you're going to go next you know what i mean yeah no to, to be fair i'm skeptical too i, I i'm i don't know if, if i believe that but like you know this I know, is I know, I know. just has but I, I treat my like I live this life as if it does matter where we go next, and just want to you know grow and yeah, work myself and be so- to live that way anyway, isn't it? Yeah, like, exactly. We're sim- yeah. We're Why be miserable? <laughs> like, I think like how many times have you gone to the movies and seen like a movie that's just inspired the shit out of you or something? You come out and you're like, I'm gonna fucking change my life. That was a great movie. Yeah. Nothing's even happened. Nothing's happened. That inspiration has always been inside of you, mm. and you just use this movie as a symbol exactly to uh, to trigger that. So in the same way, yeah. What were we talking? What were we talking about? Why did I bring that up? Uh, we we're talking about mushrooms, <laughs> mushrooms. Thing. Oh, life after death, something like life that. Life after death. We're. I don't know what I was getting at, but yeah. We're I see why Joe Rogan something. has uh, uh, young Jamie with him. It's like, what were we talking about? And he'll be like, yeah, oh right. yeah, this. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I need one. I need a Jamie. Yeah. 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 Just um, follow me around recently. DMT aliens. I want to ask you about them. Okay, yeah, let's go on the DMT aliens. <laughs> what the fuck are these DMT aliens? And how do they... Why are they... It seems, anyway, from so many people who have ex- had the breakthrough DMT experience, that it, it's so different and distinct compared to any other psychedelic out there. Even yeah. ayahuasca, which is you know, which has DMT in it. Why? Do the you thing that is- always trips me out about DMT, and I have a friend that's with me now, and she was going to take DMT later tonight, actually, for some weird reason. You know, it just kind of <laughs> happened. I don't know. Good luck. I haven't, I haven't had I haven't had this any any DMT in my life in a long time. But okay, so it's a little auspicious that we're having this conversation. So um, DMT. What was your question? The DMT aliens. What are they? I don't know what the fuck they are, but it, the thing that it weirds me out about the DMT realm is that it seems to be previously existing. Like it seems like there's shit there that is like, like the way I I kind of describe it is like being a baby and waking up. Like you open your eyes and you can look around and you can tell there are sort of things going on, but you don't really know what's going mm. on. Like you can see like lights and shapes and sort of like the matrix like, when he opens his eyes for the first time, kind of thing. Yeah, you can see that there's a world there. Like, yeah, there's something happening here, and I feel like that's what the DMT world is like. It's like being, it's like being a baby waking up in this realm and looking around and being like, I don't know what the hell is going on, but something is going on. And the thing that has been weird with me and my DMT trips is that you're almost in like an astral body. Like mm. for me, I remember one thing that really stuck out for me in my DMT trip was that. I was able to look around and my vision would shift as I looked around and I could like look over here and see something and then look over here and then look back and that thing would still be there as if there was like a previously existing it feels like thing an omnipresent happening. kind of entity for sure. So that's DMT one of the reasons weird. I feel like there are these these realities that do, are happening. Do you ever get creeped out like going into those kind of worlds and like seeing all these when aliens? I come back, yeah, yeah, when I come back, yeah, when you come back it's like well, I always come back. I get I get freaked out because I'm like, 
I always think I'm like schizophrenic or something. I'm like, yeah, Fuck. that's what scares me. That like I, um, DMT in particular is the one that I'm most afraid of by far. It's sure. a scary one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I'm good because the last I saw the recurring theme for me because yours is serpents. Mine was jesters. Ooh, that's a scary one to have. Yeah, I know that, sure. no shit. Like the sin and they had like sharp teeth and they go, <laughs> oh, and like in this, like like it. Like the movie, sort of, month. sort of, but more fractally, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> and yeah. it's like I went into the this um this devil's Satan's playground kind of realm. It's very circusy, oh, yeah. and it's like it's fucking creepy, man. I've heard people say that though. That Jester is a reoccurring figure that pops up in the DMT yeah. realm. So there was this guy who um who did an artwork of the DMT realm, the DMT Jester realm, and it's like holy shit, that's exactly what I saw. I don't understand why that happens. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess you could argue that the human brain is wired a certain way and these chemicals, you know, based on certain conditions will induce this effect yeah. and giving your cultural conditioning will make you think it looks like a circus or something like this or a gesture. It's like an archetype. And, and that's why yeah. um, I would, um, even for yourself, I'd recommend go search, searching and studying what the serpent archetype means because like maybe it will make sense in certain things because like oh, i started yeah. studying the the jester slash trickster archetype and it's like holy shit it's like full on it, obviously because there are well young anyway he's like there's many archetypes and we're all of them it's just a spectrum type of thing right. as i'm sure you know but this one is like the predominant archetype that represents my personality the most especially the shadow side of it. And it was just very interesting. I actually learned a lot about myself. The trickster, after. you mean? Yeah, the trickster. Yeah. Okay. But it, yeah, was very, but it was very sinister, the trickster that I saw, for sure. Yeah. It was like it just wanted to see me burn in hell and it was laughed about it. Like, ha, 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 ha. Look yeah, at those, me. Look at stupid human. You're so scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the gnomes I met. That's what they were doing to me. They were kind of jester-like, actually. Yeah. Now that you say that, yeah. They but could that be was tricksters. Because tricksters come in many, many different forms. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, but after going into those kind of realm, and what was scary is that that the last time I did DMT is like I went into the exact same realm which I did two years ago, before ayahuasca, which was very like a felt anyway, very demonic kind of thing. I was like, yeah, I'm not going back there again. I'm good. The Middle East had that kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it had a very demonic. Yeah, it had a very biblical demonic yeah. kind of vibe to it. It was it's weird. Scary shit. It was scary, especially <laughs> on acid. I was walking through Petra like as the sun was going down. And it like these people that live there, these Bedouins, they look like pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean. Like they wear like this dark eye makeup and oh, wear like shit. these robes. Like Jack Sparrow Pretty looking creepy. motherfuckers. Yeah, like it looks creepy, especially at night when you're on acid. Yeah. And they're sort of like lurking in the shadows of like it's like ancient place. Were you like in, that, did you feel like you were in the underworld or something? It. Yeah, it was like it was like the underworld and like these spirits uh. were just kind of lurking around. That's what it felt like. It was cool though. Creepy that was, shit. That was have That's you, a bucket list. For have, you had, to like there. have you had ayahuasca? No. Before? Not yet. No. I that would like to, though. It's the most similar to mushrooms, for sure. Easily. A lot of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it not as intense as everyone makes it out to be? Oh, it's more intense than everyone makes it out to be. It just oh, depends shit. on where which retreat you go to, because the far majority of retreats, they give tourist doses, because they're freaked out that gringos are going to freak out, so... Of course, yeah. Which um, I'm the sure retreat I that I went to, they gave you like a proper dose, and that's not even there's like shamanic doses, but I I will Fuck. not go there. I I seriously think it can make you go fucking insane if you're really not prepared for it. If you take like the real high doses, yeah, no, nah, it's the most intense thing ever. Because I thought mushrooms was the most intense experience I've ever had, and the highest dose I've had was seven point five grams, which is like ridiculous. Um, yeah, and I was like, holy shit, that blue. Like, in terms of intensity, that was way more intense than my previous ayahuasca experiences. But then now, looking on high tide, ayahuasca was like, aha, okay, you think that's fucking tough. All right. All right oh, let's God. just see when you come back. It's so, did you have this sort of, uh, like, spiritual experience on ayahuasca where you're meeting kind of these spirits and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, well, with the, with the spirits, I would say it's like I felt a presence of them outside of me, but it wasn't like I was having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. Have you ever had that happen to you where you were able to ask questions to something yes, like that? Yes, but deep down I felt like it was just myself. It was just like really? my higher self. Yeah, yeah. It didn't okay. necessarily feel external in terms of the when I was communicating, but I definitely did feel entities just outside. They're kind of in just the periphery. They're just kind of there. 
Yeah. But they, I wasn't really, but I didn't provoke that. I wasn't like asking them, hey. It always sounds so, it sounds so crazy. Yeah, it is, and it is crazy. It is (laughs) definitely crazy. But to me, I feel like this is what the occult realms are. I feel like the occult realm is weird, and that's what this, this is what it's explaining. Like the occult is the map of the psychedelic experience. And yeah, I feel like, like, especially the ayahuasca realm, like these are potions. Ayahuasca is a potion. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, like definitely. you know, like witches. You know, witches. I think it's a potion frogs. too, because a lot of people say it's medicine. I think it can act as a medicine, but I don't think that's its primary uh, yeah. purpose. Neither with mushrooms. I don't. I wouldn't consider this. I think they can have medicinal properties, but I don't think that's like what they're here right. for. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. It does feel more potiony, or or maybe a technology to communicate with other realms or whatever. Yeah, but that's what I think. I, I think that the medicinal value is like a byproduct of just kind of. Uh, shifting your perspective on certain things. Yeah, I don't yeah, think absolutely. it's like the main. Th- oh well, actually, you could argue with ayahuasca because it actually does have medicinal value in it. I think more mushrooms feels like more of a potion to me. There's this guy that you should have on your podcast, and I've been talking to him a lot lately. His name is he's a reverend, Reverend yeah? Danny Nima. Danny okay. Nima, you ever heard of him? No. He's like he's a psychedelic guy. He's re- he's written a book. It's all about psychedelics in the Bible. And this guy is like, he's got so much knowledge on it, so much knowledge. And he's, you know, he's a younger guy and he's charismatic and he's definitely somebody we should have on the podcast. Oh, nice. I've been talking to him a lot lately and I'm going to have him on my YouTube soon. Oh, sick. Psychedelics, psychedelics in the Bible has been a, just something I've been interested in lately, you know, especially being in Jordan. I went to I'll the place where the Moses Memorial, the place where Moses was supposed to die, Fuck. supposed to be, had to have died, you know, looking out over Israel and stuff like that. Really cool place. And, you know, Moses was, Moses was a mystic. So that was really inspiring for me from a psychedelic perspective. And I found him through just being like looking, being inspired from being around the Moses Memorial and Googling psychedelics in the Bible. It led me to him and I reached out to him and he's, you know, responded and Mm. he's really cool. I recommend checking that out if anyone's interested in that. Have you ever looked at like those churches that have like the paintings of Jesus or of like Adam and Eve? I saw it at my last LSD trip when I, um, at... Adam's house, and I was like, close my eyes, like kaleidoscopic church window kind of stuff. Really? Yes. Nice. Have you ever seen the mushrooms depicted in these? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Like, I, I haven't gone really in depth, but I am familiar with, you know, the psychedelic experience being really ingrained in a lot of uh, organized religions, for sure. It's yeah, interesting. Christianity is one of those. I mean, John Marco Allegro, do you know John Marco Allegro, the guy that was one of the people that were decoded the Dead Sea Scrolls? He's an ancient language scholar. No. And his, he, he, the Dead Sea Scrolls, if I remember correctly, are like some of the most important New Testament documents okay. for the Bible. You know? He was one of the only Catholics that were allowed to decode it from a kind of an objective perspective, you know, okay. like just, yeah, you know. So he's like a scientist and, in a sense? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay. His conclusion was that Christianity and the story of Jesus was just mushroom mythology. They're just passing down uh, that's this what that name ritual, th- this this ritual of uh, of mushrooms, fertility. It was a fertility cult. So and that's why with have- Jesus, though, like, did he, according to this guy, did Jesus use mushrooms as a sacrament, or was Jesus no. an actual mushroom? Is that- Jesus was the actual yeah, okay. mushroom to this guy, specifically, John Marco Allegro. He says Jesus is code word for Amanita muscaria, and you can see it hidden in plain sight all throughout these ancient cathedrals and Ah, oh, so it's churches. not psilocybin, it's Amanita. You see both. You see both, both? depicted. Okay. Yeah, you see both. You see purple-looking mushrooms and white mushrooms next to red and white spotted mushrooms. Okay. And you don't think jesus was a person i personally probably think jesus was a person yeah but I'm, that's I'm, not... I'm leaning yeah I, of course we can never know 100 percent, but i'm definitely leaning towards that he's guy he's surely he was a historical figure for sure yeah all the yeah. stories that's okay that's up for debate but um yeah have you ever heard of manna in the bible in the book of exodus manna yeah yep. manna comes from uh the aramaic phrase what is this that's what manna means mm. it's a question what is this that's what this means okay, manna was that. given it was given to moses and the children of israel as they were fleeing egypt mm. it's the bread of god that's what they call it which is pretty close to what the mayans called the flesh of the, the flesh of the god or the aztecs they called the flesh of the god the mushroom yeah, yeah. and uh the characteristics described in exodus about this manna is you know like totally mushroom conditions totally talking about mushrooms this danny nemu this reverend he thinks he's they're talking about ergot 
but to me, it, it sounds like they're talking about mushrooms for sure. Mm. And that's the first reference that I found in the Bible about psychedelics. Yeah, it would be more Meth. likely it would be mu- mushrooms over ergot. Cause it's fucking poison, yeah. ergot. Like, it would be so hard Is to... It? Well, if you eat ergot by itself, I'm sure it's going to fucking... Poison well, they talk. They have way. no. They have the. They have the whole boiling process and stuff. Oh, like that. Right. Describe, okay. Describe, yeah. Okay. Which, that's different. Though. Which I guess I think is why he thinks it's ergot because you don't really have to. I guess boil mushrooms mm. unless you were doing a. If you were doing amanita muscaria, you might have to do some sort of process, yeah, right? Yeah, amanita did poisonous. I heard that sometimes, uh, like shamans would eat it, and then the disciples would drink the piss. Drink the piss, yeah. yeah. Or they'll do it with reindeers or something, yeah. Yeah. Because it like processes uh, the uh, what is it, ibotenic acid to muscimol, or vice versa. I don't know. You have to fact check it. Yeah, so not full. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Have you had amanita muscaria? No. No. Never. Have you? No. They grow yeah. everywhere. I'm. Uh, I don't know. You I had just, that. Uh, I don't know. That psychedelic honey, though, right? Mad honey. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very overrated, to be honest. Really? Wait, did you go to Nepal? No, 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 I did it here. Someone sent it to me. Really? Yeah, I didn't go to Nepal for it. Um, do you have any idea where to find that? I would love to go to Nepal and try to try to do that. N- Nepal, I wouldn't know. I can send you the website where you can buy it. Oh, um, is it legal? Can you just buy it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. It's just, but you've got to be careful because um, I was going to do a second video of like, you know, doubling the dose, but then I found out that it's actually very, very dangerous if you overdose. Mm. It can actually like have severe cardi- um, cardiovascular effects and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I'm like, uh, maybe I shouldn't do it because pe- there are a lot said it was of more like that are going to do you it. You said it was, it was more like a detox, right? Opposed to psychedelic? It felt like I was stoned and drunk at the same time. Yeah. Okay, no no visuals? No, no visuals. I only had one te- uh, well, tablespoon. Yeah, it just felt like uh, the body high of an edible of marijuana and like okay. the headspace of like tipsiness of alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Did that's you like puke anything? One. Nah. Nah. Any pur- purge? Nah. Not really. I fasted beforehand, so I'm, I don't know. Uh, I, th- I think that makes a big difference, don't you reckon? Like fasting before you trip and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, just fasting in general is a spiritual practice. You yeah. Know, psychedelic experiences just through fasting. Yeah. I feel so much clear headed when I don't. That's why I don't eat pretty much for the first half of the day. Um, well, I yeah. do have a smoothie, but come on. Please. And when I when I had that crazy spirit spirit mushroom experience, I mm. fasted that day also. Yeah. You know? Cool. Um, so I think the intention, the intention has a lot to do with having uh, a mystical experience. Yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of people downplay like, Oh, who cares about intention? Oh, you, you know, you don't need to do it a ritualistic way or, Oh, I don't know. No, and then that's, that's the way I to disagree. do it. That's yeah. hundred percent. That's how you do it. Yeah. And I believe with psychedelics as well, it's like, there's only a finite amount of times you can really do it and continuously get long-term benefits. I believe. What do you think about, okay. So Alan Watts has the quote. Yeah. I was going to say hang that. Hang up the phone. Are you going to ask me that? Yeah. What do you think about that? nowadays? Uh, nowadays, yeah. this year, I hundred yeah. percent agree with him that it, yeah. yeah. Once you get the message, hang up the phone. But throughout the yeah. whole time I was on my psychedelic journey, I'm like, oh no, no, you can still get these benefits. But looking back on hindsight, it was all out of ego, and it's difficult when you have a YouTube channel and you're, you know, educating people on these substances. So I've got like this extra set of unconscious biases towards these things, even though I'm like very critical and trying to be as logical as I can. There was still part. Of a big part of me that was identifying with psychedelics. Um, so I got a big hyper slap, yeah. you could say. From I think Dennis, Dennis McKenna says to Alan Watts, do you know what Dennis McKenna says? Yeah, he, he says, says uh, it's an ongoing call or something like that. Yeah, it's an ongoing call. He's like, it's an ongoing dialogue. You don't, you don't just hang up the phone on your teacher. But it depends. It depends on what... Because it's all personalized, well, I think. Because I, I do think that there are people who can continuously go back and genuinely get benefits... But they're very, um, how do you say, like, they actually integrate, they eat healthy, they do all the spiritual yeah. practice, they're like the more purist, I guess you could say. I think those people probably may get more benefits, but the people who just keep going back and back and back and back again, but then they don't change simple things in their life, like changing your diet right. or, you know, reconciling with a family member or just like the really hard shit, because right. the psychedelic experience is like looking outside a window telling you what to do, but you still got to do the homework. You still got to walk through that right. door. And sometimes it takes a lifetime to even integrate one lesson. You know what I mean? It just yeah, depends I kind of feel on like you. Both those guys are kind of coming from different perspectives too. Mm. Like Dennis McKenna is kind of like a scientific kind of explorer, whereas Alan Watts is more of like a Zen guy. 
So the message for him, or at least the message for me, what I got from psychedelics, what seemed to be like the ultimate truth that was revealed to me is oneness. It seems mm. like every, that's like the ultimate thing. Like the, when I come back and my conclusion is like, it's all one, you know, like at the end of the day, this is just a, just a happening of oneness, mm. you know, just a, and I think that's what Alan Watts said when he said, when you get the message, hang up the phone. And that's the message mm. that like, but you like know, you it's said, all here and now. Yeah. And like you said, with Dennis McKenna and Alan Watts coming from different perspectives, the Alan Watts where he is, that's more where I want to go towards. I don't give a shit about yeah. the knowledge and the science. I don't care about that anymore. Yeah, I used because, to really I mean, care about it because it's like now it's like, because the more you know, the, the, the more the boundaries between what you don't know expands. So it's like a paradox. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and I've, I went really deep, man. Like, holy shit. I've had like really heavy, heavy experiences. I'm like, I'm good. I can, like, just on my last trip, I can take this whole lifetime to really integrate. I'm not saying that I'm never going to trip again, but most likely I won't. I would say. Yeah. Definitely not a heavy trip. Definitely not a heavy one. Nah. I had just... But that's uh, me now. Me, that's me now. You know, it could, yeah, it could change yeah. in a few years. But yeah. right now, at this state of mind, I am yeah, definitely not going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels like a lifetime practice for me. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to integrate. Because I still got so much shit that I want to do in my life first before I even consider taking psychedelics. Like, you know, I want to have uh, my financial position kind of set, my health, relationships, be kind of really on point with my purpose. And just... Basic things like that. I want to get those basic areas of my life covered before I kind of jump into that. Yeah. But that's me personally. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I'm yeah. an extreme person, so I had to learn extreme lessons to get to this point. So, um, how actually, I want to ask you, how do you... We, we, we should talk a little bit about integration, actually. Um, what spiritual practices do you use in terms of, like, you know, keeping you grounded and keeping you on this path, keeping... You know, that what keeps you inspired? Yeah. inspired. Um, so mostly for me, it's really simple, you know, like I just read a lot. I read a lot of Ramana Maharshi mm. and reading his words for me is like really helps keep me like yeah. in a higher state of mind and also chanting, doing what they call in India, Jap or Japa, which Japa. means like mantra, mantra meditation, like mm. or in the West, they call it transcendental meditation, TM. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. I've heard of mantra that. meditation. So mantra is a Sanskrit word. Man means mind, and tra means like to deliver. And from okay. this Sanskrit word tra, we get words like train, transport, mm. uh, transcend. So mm. a mantra is a a tool to deliver the mind, to deliver you out of the mind, to mm. to loosen the noose of your attachment to your thoughts. Is what a mantra this is. is. Important. So that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I do every day, you know, I chant. I chant, uh, you know, there's all, Ram Dass, for example, has a, a mantra called, he says, I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. He just repeats this mantra and it's meant to sort of singulate your awareness to a single point, to, to, to bring your, all this, the chaos of your thoughts to kind of gather them up and singulate them to a, to a point of, a consciousness that mm. is loving awareness or, you know, to, to connect you with your I'm, higher self. I am loving awareness. That's one of the, what he yeah, uses, right? That's, Ram, that's Ram Dass says, yeah. How, says, dude, how was that? You, you, inter you did like a short interview with him, right? Um, yeah, so I went to a Ram like Dass retreat and uh, I've been good friends with all those guys that put together those retreats. That's I just amazing. was in India with, uh, I don't know if anyone, anyone listening that's a part of like the Ram Dass satsang would know Krishna Das or a curious yeah, Akira Dante. Duncan Trussell talked yeah. about him a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I was just a Raghu Marcus yeah. who's always on the Duncan Trussell podcast. I was just in India with all these guys. Oh, nice. And we, Krishna okay. Das took us to go meet this guru in the jungle, hung out with this jungle, the jungle baba. Nice. He gave me a, he gave me a spiritual name, calls me Gajanan Das. Krishna Das was there when I got my name. It was a really crazy time, you know, like almost doesn't, it feels like a dream almost that that happened. But yeah, I went to this Ram Das retreat. Which uh, Duncan Duncan goes to these Ram Dass retreats and uh, all these spiritual mm. teachers. Jack I, I love Ram Dass's vibe so much. I love Ram Dass. Yeah, man. what a he's guy! He's amazing. And, so because uh, even him, because even like what made what kind of um, made me come to that conclusion of like you know the Alan Watts thing about hanging up the phone is like even Ram Dass stops taking Ram psychedelics Dass. and he yeah, seems like phone. someone who's so like just present, you know, just loving yeah. awareness. You know what I mean? 
yeah. and that's that's what I really look for anyway. But yeah, sorry to go back to there, but it's just another um, example. Ramdas. Yeah, for me to talk to him, it was it's crazy. Ramdas has been a big inspiration to me because I've always been into the, the the counterculture movement, especially here in America. Like what happened oh, yeah, yeah. in the seventies, you know, the Have psychedelic you seen that revolution. Netflix documentary here. with Ram Dass and Timothy Leary. Dying to know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, nice. yeah, all these guys, you know, I went and stayed at the the ashram for a week. Hmm. Actually, in nani tall it's called kenshi dam and that's where ramdas was at like this is this place is like sort of like a really significant place for the psychedelic movement mm. that people do, it, you know no it's no one gives it credit for you know but this place birthed a lot of stuff like ramdas you know is arguably one of like the people that really pushed the psychedelic movement to where it is today yeah for sure. timothy leary timothy leary and ramdas yeah. you know these this is like a the lsd duo yeah and uh you know, Timothy Leary obviously being a more kind of logical, scientific guy and Ram Dass going off to India, meeting a guru and taking the more mm. spiritual aspect of sides. Yeah. So I went and I spent a week there where Ram Dass met his guru and he gave his guru LSD once. I don't know if you know that story. Yeah, and it didn't do anything and then he yeah, did it, didn't it again. Do it, How many t- it was like something ridiculous, like what, like three or six hundred uh, so I think six hundred I think 600. Yeah, it was like, like a mega heroic like dose much. for for LSD yeah. and he's like, and he even put his tongue out. He's like, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Doing it slowly. Yep. He's like, no, nah, nothing. I think he fucked with him. He's like gone under the blankets and shit. He's like, nah, yeah, just kidding. Yeah. I'm good. It's because these yogis, dude, they have such yeah. an intense practice that they're in, they live in that state. See, they don't need, they don't need it. They, so they can go to that state without the use yeah, of physical there. substances. Now, that's yeah. the place that I want. And even like when I first started the psychedelic journey, I always saw the end goal. Like I'm most likely, like I want to get to the place where I don't need to take any drugs whatsoever and get to that place. Um, it's oh, difficult yeah. though because like for example weed is so fucking good man I mean that's what Ram Dass wanted too that's why he went to India you know that's the same yeah. exact desire the yeah. same exact thing he said yeah. I want to learn how to, to feel like this without having to take this yeah yeah exactly. Dude, those guys were just drinking LSD like <sighs> on a cup that's ridiculous they're lunatics and nothing what do you think that is no. Those, those guys are crazy. Like, Bram Das and Timothy Leary. Oh, they would drink. Oh, fuck. Yeah, hell, those man. guys. So they went yeah, really those guys, deep. Those guys went real deep. <sighs> I mean, did you ever hear the story of Timothy Leary breaking out of jail? Yes. That might have been in that documentary. Yeah, it was in the documentary. Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's crazy. I was uh, I was in the Ram Das retreat. It was in yeah. California, a place called Ojai. Hanuman Gardens is a, is a little ashram there. It's uh, dedicated to Neem Kurli Baba, Ram mm. Das's guru. They hold the retreats there. And I was out in the back, and there's this old guy back there. And I did. I was doing a video with Ragu and this guy Ramesh. And uh, there's this old guy out there smoking weed, like this old kind of. It might be Indian or something. I forgot what he, uh, you know, darker skin guy. And he's just smoking weed out there. So I walk up, hey, what's up? And uh, he introduces himself to me as the dog. What's up? I'm the dog. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And it's actually this guy is the guy. That was the lawyer for Timothy Leary during that whole time. He was the Holy one that was like shit. that was lawyering Timothy Leary when he broke out of jail. That's crazy. Yeah, wow. I got the whole interaction. I got it all on film because he was smoking weed, really? so I kind of had my camera on record just because I thought it was gonna be a funny interaction. <laughs> and you hear him go, "I'm the dog." Uh, it's awesome. I'm the dog. I'm the dog. He is the dog, I guess. But the mad dog. So yeah, yeah, the mad dog. So yeah, there's those guys, man. So those, those guys, would you say they the like? Who were your, like your biggest inspirations? Like, what, what, where do you source your knowledge My from? Biggest inspirations, especially for psychedelics, would be Ram Dass. Yeah. Don't have to be psychedelics, just like life. And Alan Watts, yeah, just in general. Yeah. My, and yeah. in general, my yeah, Ram Dass is a big inspiration to me. Joe Rogan's a big inspiration. Uh, yeah, Ramana Maharshi, Ramana Maharshi, Sri Nisargadam Maharaj. Um, I gotta check Karoli out these. Ba- I gotta check out these guys. Oh man, this yeah. book, I Am That. I Am That? You have to get this. I Am That. It's a fucking incredible book. It's Talks with Sri Nisargata Maharaj, which is just this kind of yogi that is just mm. like got such a clear, concise kind of way to deliver these deep spiritual messages. I recommend that book for sure. And I just got it when I was in Rishikesh. Nice. And I've been reading it. It's, it's awesome. Any other it's just self-help like, books that you would? recommend or? oh yeah um some self-help books the taboo against knowing who you are by alan watts yeah i've heard i haven't i haven't read that one 
but I've heard of That's it. That's a good one. Um, what do I? What else do I got over here? Um, Be Here Now by Ram Dass. It's a good book. Yeah. It's kind of considered to be like the hippie Bible. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I still haven't read that book, actually. I want to buy good book. it. Yeah, I want to yeah, cool. get it. Be As You Are. Be yeah. As You Are. That's another good one. That one really changed my life a lot. But it's got some of these books have like, like Be As You Are, for example, has a lot of Sanskrit terms, hmm. which for a long time turned me off because I just couldn't like, it just was like dry to read these terms I couldn't understand. Yeah, but that's why I like, the, I like when people like kind of rewrite it. That's why anything yeah, in Buddhism, like, for example, Alabots. I'll write, yeah, I'll like read books that are like are kind of written in this modern language but, like, but still translated from these it. books though like like be as you are or the bhagavad gita these books if you can get into them and kind of navigate your way through the terms and kind of give yourself the time to study mm-hmm. it upon them fucking incredible books like will literally change your life you know like the bhagavad gita is a life-changing book if you yeah. can actually get into it no nah, well yeah because i'm just slowly um because i was just getting into buddhism i just wanted to take it one one step at a time because as you know, just reading one book could take you like a lifetime to like, and you're still going to extract more wisdom from it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about, uh, I think I saw one of your videos, something about you had a, a Christ awakening or something like that. Oh. Does, he, uh, does Jesus inspire you? Because I, I grew up Catholic, so I was, you know, into that. And then I became atheist, like angry oh, yeah. atheist. So I against all that shit, and then full circle to spirituality, and then now Richard Dawkins was my Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and then it's yeah. like I don't know. They kind of miss the point on like the, the they just look at the material aspect of yeah. religious teachings when there's like, there's meta truth, man. There's like emotional, psychological truth to a lot of these spiritual yeah. and religious you know, texts. I heard Richard Dawkins. This is a quote straight, straight from Richard Dawkins' mouth in an interview <laughs> with Russell Brand. Okay, Richard Dawkins says there may be something to the Eastern way of things. He said that. Richard Dawkins said, I, th- I thought out of all the atheist people, I would never thought I would hear him say that. Yeah, that there may be maybe. something to the, to the Hindu way of life or the Buddhist way of life. Yeah, because it's That's interesting. I don't know, for Richard Dawkins to say that. Such a, oh, yeah. Such a he would never say that. High of atheism. No, never. <laughs> Too many debates. But I think <laughs> you can look at Christianity through the lens of these Eastern sort of ideas, which yeah. I think jesus was really kind of teaching like bhakti yoga for example yeah. for example the yoga like, of like taoism devotion. like there's a lot of parallels between those teachings for sure tons of parallels and jesus was just speaking to in a language that was you know for that area for those mm. people he was speaking in a way for those people to understand and i think he was yeah i think he was just teaching spiritual truths that you can find in all religions oh yeah 100 percent yeah. There's something there. I don't know because, like, when I even when I read about Jesus or just kind of think about him, it's like I don't know. I feel it's like it's like a very loving, warm what? kind of feeling. Yeah, hundred percent for sure. And it's just but interesting. It I from... think there's definitely something there, but I don't know. There's too many. What kind of way? I, like in terms of like... Jesus, like I think there is something there. Like I don't know whether it's a, a consciousness thing or the person that he was or in his teachings. It's just something that I don't know. I think that he yeah. there's a reason why for so many me. people have like near-death experiences and then they see Jesus and they have like this awakening. I don't know. It's just very, I just think there's something there. I don't know what it is. And I'm not necessarily saying like, just because there's something there, it means that, oh, the Bible is hundred percent correct. And I'm like for Christianity. Um, but cause there's a lot of things that kind of contradict Jesus teachings yeah. as well in yeah, within course. Christianity. So it's weird. Like the way it works for me or my understanding of it. Yeah. Is that like I kind of look at Jesus as like the same way you would look at a guru. He's kind of like a mm. teacher or sort of like a doorway that or a mirror that reflects to us our inner potential, that reflects to us our mm. inner divinity. And Jesus is a representation of – he's a symbol of that divine nature that is inside of us. Mm. If you were to manifest that into a symbol, it would be Jesus, you know, this compassionate, loving, enlightened being. This is who we all are beneath you know the the, all the rubble of our bullshit. All the shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing with a lot of this like spiritual growth. People, th- a lot of people get in the trap of you know spiritual materialism and doing outside things to add to themselves. But it's really a process of just literally letting go and shedding all the bullshit and just connecting to your original state, um, which I do think it's love, abundance, and all that hippie mm. crap. It's, yeah, but I do not. I yeah. feel like it, the yeah, hippies yeah. were onto something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They that just bunch. went on the wrong. They just took the uh, not the best approach to it, I suppose. Especially in the sixties, with the psychedelics. Okay. They went too crazy there's with a, the psychedelics. There's a new rainbow wave coming. Yeah, yeah. We're so in, in the third wave, right? 
of psychedelic. Third way, baby. Yeah. Here we are. Awesome, man. Well, I think that's a good way to end the podcast. Yeah. The third wave, baby. The third wave, baby. And Jesus. <laughs> the third wave. Jesus is back, and he came back in the form of a little square that you put on your tongue. Yeah, exactly. Um, awesome, man. Where can people find you? Obviously, you know, apart from your you YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. It's just Dakota Wint. That's my name. Uh, what else? I got a Patreon if you're into kind of supporting me in that kind of way. Just Dakota Wint. Stay happy, stay weird. That's my clothing company. I've got some cool stuff. So if you're into like tie-dye t-shirts or like hippie kind of stuff, that's a place that you would that you'd be into. Nice. Stay happy, stay weird. Uh, you doing and you're doing the Warp Tour next year, right? Yeah, Warp Tour. You guys, this is the last Warp Tour. That's great. It's going to be a big one. I don't know. You know, yeah. I think it's just that time. You know, yeah. Time for new things. I think. What kind of bands play in Warp Tour? What kind of music? Um, last year was, uh, this year sucked, but I'll go for last year's lineup. It was a little better. Sum 41, Good Charlotte, the bands like Sleeping With Sirens, Pierce the Veil, Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bands like so more sort alternative of all- indie kind of, yeah. I guess, just to put a label on it, like emo metal kind of bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah emo yeah. metal for sure. Yeah. Okay. And, so not metal metal. So yeah. yeah, there's some metal metal there oh, too, yeah? like, uh, Hatebreed, Guar. Guar, uh, I saw them at Soundwave. Who else? That was hilarious. Like, they spit you know? blood everywhere. I got... Yeah, they cut off Donald Trump's head. And... Yeah, 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 exactly. Are... Yeah. Interesting band. Yeah, so if you guys live in America or Toronto, which is going to be a Toronto day, I would love to come meet you or you to come meet me at the Stay Happy, Stay Weird tent. Mm. I'll be there all summer. You're welcome to come too. If you want yeah, to that'll be. Out, I, I really do want to. Um, I've always wanted to go to the US for the longest time, so it'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we can hang out yeah. in person. Yeah. Instead of, be awesome. That's it's, the only thing that you know, sucks about Australia. It's so fucking isolated. Yeah, you're so crazy. far. And every, yeah, I've, been wanting, ca- I've been wanting to come to Australia, but it's just like, ah, oh, it's a hike to get there. It is. It's like but, yeah. a but if you ever do come, well, you've got a place to stay, man. I will show you oh, some fucking cool you, sites. Yeah. The secret, I'll, I'll show you the there. secret mushroom spots that people always Ooh, message okay. me. I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell you how to get illegal drugs and going to, you know, give you my spot. Come on, man. People ruin it, man. They ruin the spots. You've got to be careful. <laughs> they grow yeah, everywhere, though. But anyway, I'll show you. I'll show you that's that's the inner spots. circle. That's the inner circle secrets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that's sweet, man. Cool. Been a pleasure. Yeah, cool. Love you. Love all you guys out there. I hope you're enjoying your, your time here, being in whatever body you're in and flowing through Earth. And the universe is a beautiful experience that we're all kind of sharing right now. If you're watching this, here's a moment. Exactly. We're having a moment right now. We're floating through space and time. Exactly. And, Be present. And appreciate mate, this amazing fucking. Your mate Tom. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> your mate Tom. Awesome, man. I love your videos, man. Keep doing what you do. Thanks. Um, I love your I, videos too. We should definitely I love do you this. And... <laughs> I love you're you my too, brother. Man. Thanks for having. Thanks for having me on here. All right, man. We should I'm definitely so, do I'm this again. To watch it. If you're if you're keen. I'm, yeah. Whenever. Whenever you want to do this, we can do as many as you want. Awesome. All right. Peace out, guys. All the best. Peace. All right. See you, brother.